All right, welcome to our final session for today. Um, Victoria Kirby York joins us again. She's already participated in two sessions today. So it's her third and final. So a special thank you for adjusting your really busy schedule. Um, and welcome and thank you for talking to us about accommodations. Hey everyone, how you feeling? I know I'm in a room full of other people with <laughs> hypersomnia, so you don't have to fake the funk with me. Normally, I, you know, in other spaces, I'd be like, you know, say it from your gut. Come on, we're going to say good afternoon one more time together. But, you know, we are here. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that exercise with you all. But what I will say is, let's say it how you feel it, right? So if you feel it like good afternoon, or if you want to roll your eyes like, I'm going to be here, but can she hurry? Like, say your good afternoon, however you feel it, okay? It doesn't have to be from the gut or loud, but it can be if it feels good to you to be loud and say it from your gut, okay? Count it there, I'm going to say it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I take that. In this space, I'm like, yeah, my age people say good afternoon. All right. So as shared, I'm Victoria Kirby York. You can call me VKY. Um, I use that in place of my name or she or they. I feel pretty good right now, so I probably won't be using this. But if I do, uh, probably means that, uh, you know, someone might need to come make sure I don't fall off this stage because I'm just faking it till I make it at that point. <laughs> so this afternoon, we're going to be talking about knowing your worth. I had the opportunity to do a couple different conversations uh, with Hypersomnia Foundations. Uh, brilliant CEO Claire, where'd you go? Over here. Thank you for your leadership. And in some of those conversations on LinkedIn, and you'll, there's another one coming. Stay tuned to learn more about that. One of the conversation points that we started talking about were the accommodations that we need in our everyday life, right? So often we talk about the accommodations we need on the job or the accommodations we need at school, and those are really, really important. But what about the accommodations that we need but sometimes don't ask for in our relationships, with our significant others, with our friends? with our community members, with the folks that we engage in regularly for business, the groceries, the community grocery store, that, you know, that the person knows you by name, you come in so often. And so we started to unpack these pieces around worth and what goes into, you know, whether we decide to stand up for ourselves and demand what we need in all of these different spaces and places in our life and the moments where we kind of step back and say, oh, I don't want to be a burden, you know, I'm just going to, you know, not go out tonight, because what if I have a spell at the club, right? Like, these moments, and sometimes it's, co it's covered in, in shame. Some of it's because of uh, stigma due to disability in this country. Some of us aren't quite ready to even, like, claim, like, I have a disability yet, Right? Um, that's a hard conversation for, for, for folks to even grapple with. So this is going to be a little bit more interactive. And is this one virtual too? Yeah. It is. Hi, folks in virtual land. Uh, we'll try to get you plugged in as well. If there's a chat option in there, feel free to chat it or you can tweet it, whatever feels good to you. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about knowing your worth. Is this the clicker right here? Bam, awesome. Um, requesting accommodations for every part of your life. All right, so our agenda, this is our flow. I like to call it a flow. I hope that with the time we have, we get through the entire flow. But if we get into a meaty conversation together as a team, I'm not gonna stop it because it's the conversation that the universe decided for us to have. But these are the kind of pieces that we'll be, we'll be covering. Self-perception versus our own reality. Social perception versus uh, our lived reality. Notions of worthiness. Acknowledging and accepting our needs, or I like to say our requirements to thrive. It's not optional, right? These are the things that we require to be able to be um, with and alongside the people we're in community with. 
And the last piece are when we'll really dig into accommodations for every space you enter, without exception, because you each deserve it. And also, your prioritized relationships. There are some people who are like, I don't really prioritize that relationship. I really don't care what they think of me. But relationships where there is a true transformational bond, those do matter deeply that your requirements are being met. All right? Okay, I see some of your faces like, let's see where she's going with this. Let's see. Ooh, I don't know, this is getting a little deep here at the Hypersomnia Foundation today. But this stuff is important because these are the moments that undergird the bulk of our experiences as human beings in the world, right? And sometimes we get so, I know I do, get caught up in the medicine and the treatments and it's so scientific and it's so important that I don't start to really unpack the decisions that I do and don't make on a day-to-day. -day. Anyone else do that? Or are y'all a lot better at it than I am? Okay, I'm seeing some hands, okay. So the first question that I want you to really sit with, and I really mean sit with it, for folks who wanna raise your hand after it, feel free to, but you don't have to. For those of you who have notepads that you picked up from out there at the vendors or in your bag, feel free to jot some of these things down. But this is the, this is the key part. You have to be 100% unapologetically vulnerable and honest with yourself. You don't have to raise your hand and put it out into the room, but whether you think it or write it, there's a term the younger folks say is like, don't cap, right? Don't lie to yourself, don't cap. <laughs> so the first question is, how do you think about yourself? Not what? do you think about yourself? But how do you, on a day-to-day -day basis, think about yourself as a whole person, not as a person living with IH, or a, a mother, or one particular, or a father, or one silo, or son, part of your life? How do you think about yourself? Feel free to write that down, think about it. I'm looking at the pins to see uh, when to, to move to this next piece. Do you think about yourself regularly throughout the day, what your needs are? Do you schedule time for yourself in the morning for the rest of the day? Or do you just kind of go in autopilot through every day and you don't really stop to think about yourself at all? And your answer is like, how do I think about myself? I don't. <laughs> You're like, I just need two words, I don't. <laughs> Say that again. Oh, you're like, oh, uh. <laughs> my, my therapist, she's like convinced. She's like, you, you have a spell whenever you're activated or people say triggered. She's like, yeah, you just need to play some music. You'll be fine. I'm like, I wish it were that simple. But, you know, <laughs> when you said that, it made me think about that. Like, oh, I have to think about myself. Shit. All right. This next question is, what do you say to yourself? Positive, negative, or neutral? Do you say, what are some of the self-talk that you give to yourself? How do you encourage or discourage yourself? What do you say to yourself? What's the common theme that you hear in your head throughout the day? I think I with yeah, say it out loud. You negotiate with yourself? Yeah. Yeah, so for, for folks watching virtually, she's saying she negotiates with herself. Like, if I do this now, kind of thinking about the pacing throughout the day. Anyone else? I'm going to save. Ah, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> I'll do that tomorrow. No, not, mm-mm. Yes. I don't have IH, 
So yeah, you understand. Mm, the game of will I ever have enough energy? I say that to myself all the time. People are always like, you say that? Yeah. I studied theater, so I just, I can turn it on. But yeah, I feel you. Yeah, she said energy day. Is it a cup or a teaspoon? And how I help with my children to explain my disability is I have batteries. And I only have I like half that. a battery. And I can choose where I want to use that. So now that I'm more aware, then, okay, I've got something big this day. Okay, so I've got to be you know, calm the day before to rest that for Yes. So she talks about... Uh, to her children especially, and also to herself about uh, thinking about her energy as a battery, right? How full she is, right? That's great. Now, what do you allow others to say about you and about your condition? And I put allow on purpose. Because sometimes we have friends who joke and like to to laugh at, at our expense. They think, think oh, you know, I, I fell asleep at a friend's birthday party once, like in my plate. It's an ongoing joke now for like 15 years. And I'm just like, you know, for a long time, I just let the jokes continue. And then one day I was like, you know what? I was not feeling very well. And I was very sad that I missed out on some of that birthday, the birthday party experience that the rest of you had. And I know you all think it's funny, but that's everyday life for me. And instead of laughing at me, I would have appreciated you to, you know, respond in a different way. To, to maybe ask me in those situations, how would I like you to show up for me? Right? But for a long time, before I started to really question this piece on worth, I allowed people to say a whole lot of stuff I shouldn't have allowed them to say. So I want you to write that down or think about it. What do you allow others to say about you? And internalize for yourself why that might be. And some of you might be like, I don't take that mess. <laughs> I don't allow anybody to say it. Let that be your truth. Write it down. If you want to speak it into the room, feel free to do that as well. <laughs> because that's important too. And you should congratulate yourself for being in that space, right? Because it's a journey. And sometimes it's a journey back and forth. There have been some years in my like 17 year journey with IH where I felt like I am superwoman and if you try to tell me that <laughs> I am not like doing the greatest job possible even with this condition, like we're about to like talk this through and there are other days where I just wanna like, someone says something and I'm just like, mm -mm, like mm, I don't wanna be out there with you guys because you're hurting my feelings but I'm not gonna say it so I don't wanna cause a scene. And every other year, every year it changes, right? Our experiences shift. And that's human. Don't judge yourself for that. But you definitely want to think about it. And lastly, how do you interrupt any negative and insert the truth or the positive about yourself? The example that I gave about my friend's birthday party was, was what I should have said at that time, right? <laughs> We've got a mic coming. Thank you. Um, I found that people, it's, it's interesting, somebody that hasn't heard of your sleep disorder until two minutes ago and they have a solution of what you should have tried. Or, oh, I'm tired too, or this and that, and where they try to diminish it. And at first I approach with education, but I have a level of boundaries where if it's somebody that just always minimizes something that's serious because they don't know how to respond. I just sort of sever ties with those types of people. I, I don't have the energy for people in my life that aren't just active listeners. And even if they don't understand it, they, they just go, wow, that's got to be really hard. And that's way better than, have you, have you tried caffeine? Yes. You know? Like, yes. Oh, gosh, I never thought of it. <laughs> well, my friends judge my caffeine, right? I'm like, I have to say nothing about your coffee, but you want to get all up on my monster energy drink. Like, mind your business. My monster has vitamin B and a whole lot of other vitamins in it. Your coffee does not. 
<laughs> yes, or yeah, 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 right? Whatever your thing is. In the kind of social justice space, we say, don't yuck my yum, right? So it's my yum. It's okay if it's yuck to you. Keep your yuck to yourself. Don't yuck my yum. Um, yes. I just forgot real quick the thing I was about to say. It's okay. All right. So I'm going to move this forward a little bit because you guys are in this space. So my sense of you all and some of the responses is that some of you have already moved into a space where maybe social validation doesn't matter, you know, as, as much. But you should consider the moments that you do care, right, and ask yourself why that is, because often that root reason is part of why we don't make the demands of the requirements that we need in the different spaces and with the different people that we're in community with. Um, where are the spaces that you choose to take up space and speak your truth? And what are the spaces where you may shrink back when it comes to what you might ask? For a long time for me, that was the grocery store. I would see people get in the um, uh, automatic chairs to go around. And when I was pregnant, I had no problem using them, right? I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm not walking around this whole store. Like, I didn't feel any judgment about it. <laughs> but then when I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I started to experience more severe pain on top of having the um, random sleep spells, I was like, I do not want to be embarrassed by falling out on this floor in pain by myself in this grocery store. I'd rather if something happens, I'm in this stationary chair, right? Um, but for a while, it, I was like, oh, the older people are judging me. Like, why is this young person in here using up all the good automatic chairs, you know? Then I felt, <laughs> I felt judged by the younger people. Like, what is she doing with this chair? Ain't nothing wrong with her. Like, I had all these conversations in my head. Now, mind you, all these people might be minding their own business. <laughs> they don't care at all about me in this chair. But in my head was a whole series of conversations about me in this chair getting my groceries, right? And so there are certain spaces where I feel like I'm going to champion and advocate for myself. And there are other spaces where I just be like, I'm going to walk in this store in pain and may fall on my face in pain <laughs> or need to have a spell because I am good. I am known for just squatting on the floor and taking a little nap in the middle of the grocery store. My, my, the, the folks that work at my neighborhood grocery store are like hip to the game. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I should have just got what I needed. I would have been in and out and back home already, right? And not sitting on the floor sleep, right? And so I use that just as an example for you to think about what are the places that you feel like your strongest self, your firmest self, and where are you like, mm, I know I need this, but I'm not trying to be judged by it. For instance, I use this uh, cane chair. So if, you know, I need to take a, a, if I need to sit down at some point, I can do that. I have, um, you know, where the heart rate increases sometimes when I get up, I get dizzy. So it's good for me to also have it to stabilize myself when I need to. But for a while, I was like, I am 36 years old. I don't know how I feel about walking around with this cane. My grandmother's walking around with this cane. Me and my grandmother walking through the fair with this cane together. I had all of these, the tape playing in my mind, right? At the end of the day, my grandmother appreciated the solidarity because she also was thinking, man, I don't want to be walking around this fair with this cane, you know? <laughs> She's used to not walking with the cane either. Um, so anyway, um, So one of the things that I did want to highlight around kind of reclaiming your worth, knowing your worth, is whether you see yourself as a person who is chronically ill or disabled, and whether you see kind of a them versus us or a we, right, in those spaces. Because the disability rights movement needs all of us in order for us to get the kind of accommodations we need throughout all of our lives. And I know for me, it took me a while to be able to say, yeah, I'm disabled, and yep, these are the things that I need, and sometimes you're gonna see me and I'm gonna be walking just fine, and you're gonna be like, why does she have that cane? She can walk just fine, and other times, you're gonna be like, dang, like, let me move this shit out the way. 
because <laughs> it's a dynamic disability, right? There are some parts of the day where no one can tell there's anything different. So I want you all to say this with me again. You can say it however your IH, your um, hypersomnia is, wherever you are on the spectrum, or if you're a supporter, just kind of where you are in this space. Um, I want you to say, I am worthy. All right? I am worthy. Shout it to the rooftop if it feels good to you. I am worthy. We are worthy. We are worthy. Yes, we are. And your needs deserve to be met the same as anyone else. Sometimes we're quick to say, let me make this meal the way this person needs it to be made. Or let me go make sure this other person in my life has exactly what they need to thrive. But we can't also say, I'm going to be an hour late, probably to almost everything. <laughs> and this is why. <laughs> and so instead, when we're late, we're like, mm, it's just like set the expectation. Right? Set the expectation. Let people know. Or the other way around, you're going to be on time, but you're going to leave early. Right? Like, I need to be back home before the spells start popping up, depending on, you know, what your personal timeline is. So let folks know, I love y'all. I'm not leaving because I love you less, but for my own health, deuces. <laughs> right? And so it's making sure that you center yourself. You know, someone told me, you know, you can't fill anyone else's cup if you're empty. I'll push the wrong button. There we go. So these are just some notions of worthiness. That if it's helpful, if you take a photo of it, just remember some of these things. All of them might not relate to you. Some of them may. But I want you to know and never forget that your illness or disability does not define or provide a limitation to your worth. No one is worthy if they're able to, you know, work a complete nine to five every single day of the week without having a spell or starting the day a little later than someone else or, in, you know, having a more flexible schedule or having to work from home. Your limitations are just that. They're your boundaries. And everyone has their boundaries. Some people's boundaries are just more common than others. But everybody knows unicorns are cooler than horses, right? Anybody else got kids? Like, my daughter is like, I want a unicorn. We all know you don't know really exist. But <laughs> can't tell that to her. She knows they exist, right? They're uncommon, right? Um, and so you just have to know that what makes us different just makes us different, and we're all different. There are those of us with IH that have different symptoms, different symptom severity, our symptoms peak and low at different times. Same thing with narcolepsy and KLS, right? Your illness or disability is not a burden. All right, this is one we gotta say together. We're gonna say, my illness or disability is not a burden. Say, my, y'all ready? My illness or disability is not a burden. Sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm not going to ask my wife, you know, to do X, Y, or Z or my spouse to do X, Y, or Z. I don't want to be a burden. I'm just going to, you know, figure it out. Like, no, you don't have to figure it out. No, you don't. You can either figure it out together or you can say what you need in that moment. Sometimes I'm like, I need help up the stairs because I really would like to go to sleep in my bed tonight, but I feel like I might pass out on the stairs, break my ankle. Like, that's not going to be a good look. <laughs> so instead of falling asleep on the couch because it's safer, I should just call my spouse and say, please come downstairs and help make sure I get up these stairs okay. That person said they're going to love me through sickness and health, through death do us part. Not a burden. Release, release any shame or guilt connected to your chronic illness or disability. In this piece, your condition is not a requirement for additional suffering, especially not in silence. Sometimes we think, oop, well, you know, 
I have IH, so it just means, you know, people aren't going to invite me to things anymore. What? They better keep inviting. Let them know. Please continue to invite me sometimes. I'm going to change my mind and not be able to go because I'm not feeling well. But keep inviting me because next time I might can attend. Right? Or sometimes we say, well, you know, I'm so tired at night. I never call the loved ones, like my classmates and my friends and stuff, so I don't get on the phone that much. So I'm just not going to call because it's been a while. No, just say, hey, as you know, I live with blank, blank, blank. <laughs> I love you. I'm still glad, so glad we're friends. I know we haven't spoken in a while. I'd love to catch up with you. And sometimes it might be over Zoom. Sometimes it might not be in person, and that's okay. And sometimes you can say, I'm going to be your spontaneous friend. We're not going to set, we're going to meet up next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. We're not playing that game. Because <laughs> I can't guarantee that's going to be made. Call me your spontaneous friend. I'm going to hit you up when I'm feeling real good and just see if you're free. And we can go bowl together because I'm feeling good right now. Awesome. <laughs> Are your expectations of others too low? I have that problem. I just, I'm just like, I sometimes just expect people to be here and I just, in my head, I already expect them to be here and I meet them there. Instead of expecting them to be here, to be great because they're my life for a reason. They're my loved one, they're my friend, they're my community grocer whose money, you know, I give them quite a bit of money every week. <laughs> that helps them live, right? <laughs> So if they need to widen their aisles just a little bit more so someone with a cane can walk in and get their baskets put in while someone else is walking, like making that request is reasonable because it's not going to just help you. It's going to help others as well. Right. But often our expectations are here when they should be here. Ask yourself, what do you need from those that love you to thrive? If you enjoy going out, what do you need to have in place to go out and enjoy yourself? I went, went to Chicago for my former best friend. <laughs> I had to let her go. I'm like, you, I've, I've had IH for 17 years. You were there with me through the process. If you can't get with it, like. But went to Chicago for her birthday. And um, she was really excited. I fell asleep in the club. <laughs> right outside of the bar, <laughs> right here, like, and she was so embarrassed. She was like, come on, let's go. I was like, no, I'm fine. Just let me sit here. You know, I'm just going to, you know, it'll pass, and then we'll get up, and we'll dance, and we can have some more fun. Like, it's not that deep. But she had so much stuff about me being there. It's like she imagined, like, oh, people are going to think you're drunk and, like, passed out at the bar. She had more shame about it than I did. Right. So we ended up leaving, not getting a chance to finish celebrating her birthday. She had feelings about it. Versus when you set those expectations and say, hey, you know, I would love to go out if I have a spell. This is the plan. Right. Have that in place. This is the spot that I'm going to be <laughs> or you can check on me. This is the safest space in, in, the, in the place for me to be able to sit and just. Be to myself if need be. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, this is the game plan. Get your emergency alert bracelet with whoever you, 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 know, you want folks to call to come pick you up if need be, if you're not in a place to be able to drive home. Have your plan set. Having hypersomnia doesn't mean that you can't still do the things you enjoy. It just means you have to plan and set those expectations differently and demand people in your life to meet them. So, have to acknowledge and accept what those requirements are. So for me, I've had to accept that I am probably never going to be in a place, knock on wood, but maybe it might change, to work a standard nine to five in a cubicle office setting again. Just not a part of my reality. I had to accept that, right? That I need to work someplace where there is a mix of remote options or fully remote, right? There's a moment you have to grieve the loss of being able to go to the office and hang out with your coworkers and all those little moments, right? And after you grieve, you got to get to that place of acceptance and start then operating from that place of acceptance. 
And that process sometimes plays out for your loved one because maybe that means you might make less money than you made before and your significant other and you have to figure out what that's gonna mean for your bills. But do that together, build that plan together. Inclusion is about making sure that folks in your life are thinking about what you need. It's like I have a dairy and gluten allergy, so if I'm going to dinner at a friend's house, I hope they're cooking food that doesn't have dairy or gluten in it, right? <laughs> and so, but we have to have that communication. But that's what inclusion is, having someone set the table, prepare the table for you to participate and not have to be a second thought, added chair, new meal made at the last minute, right? That's just a metaphor but think about it in, in regards to the things that we need. You know, think about what you require in a variety of contexts. I know others throughout the conference have talked about work, school, but also think about home. Making sure you do have some blankets and a comfortable pillow downstairs for those nights that you might fall asleep on the couch <laughs> or in the office. Our office has a bed because, you know, middle of the day I might need to take a nap, right, or a futon. Um, think about at social or family uh, events or outings, at the family reunion. Is it all outside or is there a space where you can go that may, not, that be, may be more comfortable than your car? If you need to take a moment, that should be going into the planning of what location is selected. And not just for you, for everybody and your family. But the thing about it is when we start to speak up about what we need, others start to speak up too. Like when uh, this recent rule from President Biden came out, proposed rule where they were trying to, um, and, and trying to stop the opioid crisis, went a little too far. <laughs> and, and it was basically trying to make it harder for folks to get stimulants and hormone replacement therapy and pain medications if you have chronic pain. And the first folks that, that first started to respond were the, the folks who uh, needed the pain relief. And then you started to see the LGBTQ community respond around hormone replacement therapy. Then you started to see folks from um, other parts of the communities that use stimulants, folks with ADHD, all started putting in comments. And he paused it. He's like, oh, we got a lot of feedback. <laughs> we need to pause it, slow it down, and think about this a little bit more, right? But that was because... What pe one group started the, the ball rolling and next thing you know, everyone else started thinking, oh, this impacts me too, this impacts me too, this impacts me too, right? We have to think about that, how us speaking out and, and really advocating for ourselves also helps other people get that courage and the strength. Think about while traveling, shopping, exploring, exercising. That's the other reason I use my cane when I'm traveling because uh, especially at Charlotte Airport, I didn't realize Indianapolis's airport was as big as it was because I would have definitely asked. I get wheelchair assistance and I get the looks, those same looks. She looks like she can walk. I am not about to get into TSA and have a spell with the dog sniffing, you know, <laughs> patrol team all around me. If I'm gonna have a spell, it's gonna be in this wheelchair with whoever's pushing me, right? So. Think about the things that you need to be able to operate safely wherever you are. Same thing with exercising. Adopt community or familial norms with the people in your life. Talk about the symptoms that you experience and what that means for you, right? What does having brain fog mean for you in your life day to day or sleep inertia? So like for me, me and my wife, we're always going back and forth about my alarms. I've got like 10 alarms that go off and it's like the bane of her existence. <laughs> so there are some days where she's like, baby, I really need you to not sleep in the room with me because I'm trying to sleep in tomorrow. I don't wanna hear those alarms. So I'm gonna sleep in the guest room that night, right? We've had that shared agreement. Um, time agreements, right? Maybe it's like, please don't schedule me before 10 a.m. If you schedule me before 10 a.m., I am likely not to show up. We had a historic meeting at the White House two weeks ago that started at 8.30. Was VKY there at 8.30? No. That was the accommodation I put in my registration <laughs> so they knew I was gonna show up late and I hope they have a chair for me. And they did. Have no make sure that people in your life have knowledge about what medical treatment or support you need. So my coworkers know if, if we're out in the field, please have a grocery store somewhere nearby where we can get some monsters to supplement my Sanosi. 
because about the middle of the day, that medicine stops to not work as well. <laughs> Think about schedule change agreements, driving support. My wife knows if we're driving from DC to Florida, I may or may not be able to help her. That's a long drive. So we should plan to budget to have some money to stay at a hotel. If it turns out that I'm not able to help as much, we need to budget that into the schedule. Now, I might be perfectly fine and able to drive, and that means we're gonna get where we're going a lot earlier, right? And yay. But let's start with the expectation <laughs> that I'm not gonna be able to contribute. Um, pacing, which I know a couple of you talked about, and playing agreements with children. My daughter's five, she likes to jump on me, she thinks I'm a slide. Anybody else have young kids? Yeah. What do your kids like to do? Well, I have niece and nephews. You have niece and nephews. They always like to come and stay over at my house because I'm their only aunt. And my younger nephew, who's four, I, I live alone. And I'm like, he's up and he's go, 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 go. And I'm like, I can't do that by myself. It's yes. It's hard to say no to him, but let the older two. Oh, thank you. Oh, um, let the older two. let the older two stay over because they can get up and get breakfast and watch TV or play with toys until I get up. And I always tell them, Smart. I'm going to get up at this time. So if you get up before me, go ahead and get breakfast. And so I do that, but it's really hard to not have the four-year-old stay over because I just can't do it because he is much more go, 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 and can't do things by himself like the older two can. I love that you have a plan in place with those older kids to make sure that, you know, that you have help in managing that energy. Yeah. That's super important. And my sister, she doesn't quite understand, and she thinks that I need to have the four-year-old stay to make it fair, but the older two, I mean, they know I have narcolepsy, and they ask me questions about it too, which I think is kind of cool. I love that. Yes, let the kids ask questions. There's a book, a children's book about narcolepsy on Amazon too. Um, there's like a series. And you know, that's another way for people, for kids especially to better understand what, you know, what's going on. And because some of these diseases run in families, you know, it's good for them to be exposed to it early in case you know, it ends up impacting one of their lives. They know that they, you know, can still continue to live their life, you know, that it's not an ending of everything. It's just like the caterpillar going to the cocoon and, you know, having this wonderful transformation into a butterfly. It's just a different experience and chapter in your life, yeah. right? And I could talk about that all day, but yeah. That's, no, thank you. That's a great example. I think there's a hand over here, or did I make that up? I made that up, okay. Um, make sure you have breaks incorporated into your plans. Uh, vacations, retreats, I talked about family reunions. Um, just so you can recover, right? Like, after a family reunion, I'm like exhausted. If I have to go to work the next day, and I know that that's a, a privileged thing, right? Because some people are like, what, there's no option, I gotta go to work when I get back, like <laughs> Monday, right? It's part of why we're, we're always fighting for paid leave. But those breaks, you know, are really important to schedule in and plan in, so um, you have something to, to, to pour from to start your week. I see a hand. Do you have your hand? No? Oh, no, I thought, right, no, okay. Hey, just Victoria, we have about five minutes. Perfect. Okay. I think this is our last slide before final Q&A. We're going to move, the right. I believe so. So these are three questions that you want to ask yourself. I have just some different examples of what you can think of, but what tools do you need? And think about, again, every place that you enter, every prioritized relationship, can think about, um, that was supposed to be cane chairs. There was like an autocorrect. <laughs> but, you know, example, a cane chair like that. I found it on Amazon because I was like, I'm not ready for a rollator. Like, I'm still, still processing that for myself. I wonder if there are canes that are also chairs. Put that in Amazon search, and voila, there were like a few different models. Um, called a switch stick. 
Rollators are great because they have a chair. And there's some really cute ones now. You can get them like accessorized, make them cute and fun. Um, wheelchair support at an airport, asking for a break room, um, an office with a door or a you know, window shade or a private cubicle if you're you know, in an office that's more open, a sofa in your office or break room. Ex this is kind of work related, but extended lunch with an extended day perhaps, ride sharing supplements as a benefits package. So days you can't drive, like maybe Lyft and Uber can you know, uh, be the way that you get home, right? Um, think about what shifts do you need whether that's working from home, Zoom-based social gatherings, Zoom happy hours, man. They, they got some of us through the pandemic. You can still, just because, you know, people are going out in the world more, it doesn't mean that the Zoom happy hours have to end. Um, more spontaneous outings. That's going back to the comment I made about being that spontaneous friend, or maybe you're now the spontaneous wife. Like, you don't plan dates with your spouse anymore. You're just like, so babe, I'm feeling really good. You wanna go to, what's a good place people go out on dates at? Let's go play golf at a, what's that place? Top Golf. yeah, we're gonna go to Top Golf. <laughs> um, more grace like talking to folks about more grace for cancellations or rescheduling. Um, make sure your friends know, I do want you to continue to invite me. If I say no, don't take it personal. Please don't get in your feelings. It's not about you. Think with your you know, head, not heart. <laughs> I definitely want to get time with you. Think about travel buddies when you're trying to go somewhere, making sure you're not going alone. That also goes for exercising. I shared earlier that I've got, you know, I don't go bicycling as much. I just really need to find me a bicycle buddy. So if I get tired or something happens, I'm not stranded alone, right? Think about that. Or one of those bicycle clubs where people kind of all go out together. You build relationships. Um, give yourself extra time. That's hard, but you know, try it out. Uh, <laughs> ask for grace for tardiness or early exits. Um, have check-in calls or texts after events. Like, oh, I said that wrong. Ask your loved ones to send you check-in calls or texts after events to make sure you made it home, right? And if they don't hear from you, that's the key for them to figure out or to connect with people to make sure you're okay, right? So you, especially if you're driving by yourself. Um, for those who, are, who, who drive. Um, anything else come to mind for you all of things that you, you know, want to shift in your own lives or tools you might want to receive or get? I have a couple tips. Um, the employer one, I no longer work in an office, which is perfect for me. But when I did, um, one tip I have is a lot of employers have lactation rooms, which are great nap rooms. So check with your HR on that. Um, for work accommodations, uh, I've been successful with a few employers of having a delayed start time. So everybody starts at 8.30, I start at 11. Um, I've had employers that I interviewed with had an offer extended to me. I know they work 24 seven, they need IT coverage at night, and then they were, when I requested the accommodation, they rescinded the offer. I took them to the state of Michigan civil rights kind of thing. And yes! I got five hundred dollars. I it wasn't about <laughs> I honestly the thing I yes. wanted for them was that they would have required training for their HR to understand what reasonable accommodations are, um, legally speaking. I wanted them to have it annually. Uh, the agreement we came to was that they would have it once and then they offered five hundred dollars. I ended up with a job with a better company, more money and um, where they really understood. And I, I had to work a month in the normal schedule to onboard and, and train with people. I held up my end of the bargain. It was a tough month, but I made it through it and they held up their end of the bargain of letting me do the 11 a.m. So um, reasonable accommodations are a um, very gray area, uh, subjective where they can be sneaky about it but I also don't want to work for an employer that doesn't want the best for me too. So it, it helps right. you weed out bad employers, to be honest. It's just harder to find the job. 
And now there's even more jobs that are starting to, you know, think about some of these things because of the mass disabling event, you know, that was the, that continues to be the COVID-19 pandemic. One resource I learned about recently with the Department of Labor is the um, Jobs Accommodation Network, JAN. And they have some really great resources, um, workshops, PowerPoints, handouts around, that's symptom-based around the different kinds of accommodations you can request. And they have trainings that you can ask your employers and HR folks to attend as well to be better supports for you. And I found some of their stuff really good, surprisingly. I, I started with low expectations because you know government sometimes, eh, but it's, it's pretty good. Anyone else? I, I'm getting the time to wrap it up. Yes, I think it is. Um, but thank you so much. I wish I'd heard this talk 10 years ago. But thank you for bringing it to us. Um, just give Victoria. Thank you all. Remember, you are worthy. <laughs> Reclaim it, shout it out.